and welcome. I'm Mahanur Nadeem, a second year DPhil student at Oxford University studying Oncology. Today, I will be talking about the dilemma that surrounds PhD applications. The very basic question, where to begin? How do you know where to apply, when to apply, and what is the first process? first part of the process because there's a lot of information a lot of things that you need to be doing and it might just get overwhelming at some point because you need to have your transcripts and your documents in order you need to take the english language exam depending on whether you're an international student going to an english speaking country and the gre exams if you're going for scholarships in the u.s some places in germany and so on and so forth so there's just a lot of stuff that you need to be doing so where do you begin? Which step do you take first? And how do you know when you will be making your applications and whether you will have ample time to do it nicely? So I will be answering this question from my own experience. I do not claim to know everything about the process. I just know what I did and what worked for me. Because I've gone through a series of rejections and then a series of happy exceptions and then finally landing into Oxford, I'm just going to be sharing my own experience of how I begin. And if you're interested in my system, and uh, you would take my suggestion. So the first thing is to just grab a notebook and a pen, just any notebook, and just begin taking notes. In my own experience, I felt that if I saw uh, ads and stuff online and I just noted them through bookmarks or just like sent myself a reminder through email I would possibly never ever apply or just look back at them when it was already too late so what I did was I made notes and I took it like a project that I went back to every week and I dedicated separate time for my PhD application process. So because I was a full-time student and I was also working at that point, so what I did was basically I kept Saturdays as my application days and I dedicated about three to four hours every Saturday into that process. So the first step I took was I noted down university names because I didn't know names of universities other than a few top ranking universities or the names that you constantly hear in the news or something so i wanted to know what options i might have if i'm looking into a particular project but before even the project i just noted down the university names and once i had the university names every week i picked one university from that and i would just go through their medical science division web domain and whatever suited me like for example i was interested in immunology cancer virology so i searched these keywords on those websites and looked at the principal investigators working on those domains and so some universities have dozens of supervisors working in for example one domain there would be 12 supervisors working on cancer there would be about 20 working on immunology so i noted every name and then i pinpointed out of those 20 the ones that i would be really interested in like for example if someone is working on cancer therapy through radiotherapy that was something i would i was not interested in so that would just be crossed out then and there but someone who was working on cancer therapy through using a virus i would definitely be interested in that that was just my interest so i would note that down and i would mark a star on that just to make sure that this is my top priority and this really helped me narrow down the labs that I wanted to apply to. And doing this week after week, I also began to notice that there are certain ads about deadlines to PhD positions or deadlines to scholarships because some universities have separate deadlines for PhD applications and separate deadlines for scholarships. And you do need to be careful that you know all of this. And this is something that you would learn once you get into the system of looking for things. Because when you're looking for information, you will find that there's tons of information available for you. You just need to start looking. And once I had the system in place, I did this week over week until I sort of had a huge list of professors that I would want to write to or scholarship applications that I would want to make. And then I started sending emails and stuff. And one important thing that I did along with that was develop a support group, a peer group. And this support group was not dependent mostly on friends, although some of my friends knew that I would be working on something like that. But the thing was that here I needed support from professors, professors I had worked with previously or 
my previous PIs or my current PI in masters for that point in time and I needed their support because when you're applying for a PhD you do need reference letters so the most important thing at this point once I had a list of universities and labs that I was applying to was to keep them in the loop because they were the ones who would be approached for giving reference letters for speaking about me of what kind of student I am so I kept them in the loop that this is something I will be doing and would you please give me a reference letter and I gave them a kind of a general idea of how many labs are applying to and what would be the deadlines so they knew that they would have emails back and forth from people asking about information uh, like asking information about me and they were c very kind with it and they did provide reference letters and I applied to dozens of places and my support group was extremely supportive in this matter and I really thank them because all my dozens of failed applications or the series of successful applications that came later were all supported by them and they did dedicate time to sending reference letters so firstly you set a system for yourself you search universities you search labs that you're interested in you narrow down you cross out things that you are not interested in because the thing is you cannot send applications that are half-baked because i don't think you would want to eat a cake that is half-baked so please consider that no one would want to look at an application or consider it if it is half-baked if your heart is not in it if you are applying to cancer radiotherapy but actually you want to work on cancer immunotherapy so that doesn't just make sense and that is something you should not do so these are kind of the basic steps this is where you start look for universities look for labs note down deadlines make it a project because the a PhD journey is something huge it will change your life for me I consider a PhD my game changer that is my chance in life to make it big in the field that I'm interested in so if that is how you take your PhD and if you're really interested into it consider the application process project and it will work out for you definitely I hope you find this information helpful and you get some idea on where to start and how to go about it so if you find this helpful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my, to my channel. Or if you know someone who might find this information helpful, please share it with them. I would be really thankful and I will see you with more information in the next video. Thank you.